and welcome to the studios of Community Media and Network for tonight's live town hall meeting, Medical Marijuana Revisited. Hello, I'm Charlie Langton tonight, your host, and we're going to be talking about medical marijuana, the good, the bad, and the ugly about what's going on in this world of medical marijuana. We'd like you to participate in our program. Call us now at 248-589-7778, or you can log in to the Oakland Press Dot com. Let me introduce the panelists real quick who will participate for the next half hour. Uh, Rick Thompson, he's with Medical Marijuana Magazine. Michael Camorn is a defense attorney. Bill Dwyer, he's with the Oakland County Commissioner and a former police chief of Farmington Hills. Gerald Fisher, professor of law at Cooley Law School. Neil Rockine, a criminal defense attorney. And Chuck Samchina, a regular on this panel with the Royal Oak Commission. Thank you, gentlemen for being here today. Uh, this uh, event is sponsored by Community Media Network and the Oakland Press. I thought it was interesting that the Oakland Press in an editorial yesterday, the title of which was medical, it, should, it didn't even say medical, it said marijuana should not have been legalized. Uh, Rick Thompson, according to the Oakland Press editorial, they say, and I quote, there are no scientific peer-reviewed studies that show marijuana reduces chronic pain. Do you agree with that? I totally do not agree with that, and I sure wish they'd called me for a quote before they put that in the uh, in the paper. Uh, there are quite a few different medical studies that support the, uh, the efficacy of medical marijuana. One great source that anybody can access online would be a, a list called Granny Storm Crow's List. Uh, if you Google it, Granny Storm Crow, it's an individual person that put together a list of about 2,500 different medical studies. These are scientific studies, double blind, very high end uh, from nature, from the Are physiological journal. Peer journals. reviewed studies? Peer reviewed studies. By yes, doctors, sir. real doctors. If you can't get it in Nature magazine <clears throat> if it's not a peer reviewed study. Chuck Samchia, uh, apparently. There, uh, there are studies, and it may be a moot point anyway since the voters voted this. Are, are you still of the opinion that there's no benefit at all for medical marijuana? Well, what's, what's apparent is, is that <clears throat> with 100,000 registration cards out there and the profile of the uh, holders of those cards uh, being many, many of them, 95% of them being young adults complaining about uh, minor aches and pains, it's very clear that uh, the majority of this marijuana is not being used for real medical benefits. It's more for recreational drug use purposes. Charlie, Charlie I watched the show the last time, yep. and I swore when I came on this show I wasn't going to let anybody talk about in generalities and vagaries. So Chuck can reach for any documentation he wants. I, I'm pretty sure unless he's hanging out at compassion clubs and dispensaries and he's actually meeting with patients, the people that I represent, some of whom are even in this audience are cancer patients. There are patients of all different varieties. There are people who suffer from multiple sclerosis who had absolutely no remedy or relief. But Neil. Until, hold on, I'm just gonna, let me say one thing, Charlie. The idea that we're gonna sit here and talk about uh, medical marijuana, and we're gonna talk about it as though in generalities. I don't wanna talk about generalities. Let's talk about the specifics. There are people, if medical marijuana benefits one person, one person, then you know what? God bless us and, this, and the voters for having approved it and giving that one person relief. And I thank him, and I'll thank him again, and I'll fight for every single one of those people. Yeah. Chuck, and, <coughs> Well, thank you, Charlie. I was interrupted in the middle there. The, uh, uh, I may do it again if he starts the, talking the, about the it. The specifics are in my hand. He's got the, uh, the newspapers are You're holding up the free the press. Paper. A yeah. conservative person holding up the free press. I love that. It's and there's your source. Thing. Okay. And, and not even the paper that's sponsoring our show. That's okay. <laughs> but Charlie, no, the press doesn't wait, like it. No, Charlie, you, the, the, big, point, the biggest point here is that is there are some people who believe they can receive benefits from marijuana. I don't dispute that. But the problem with this law is that 99% of the users, in my mind, and what's documented in the uh, by quotes from they abuse uh, it. All the users abuse, abuse it. it. <laughs> and uh, it's a law that's all encompassing. It maybe it helps a few small people. But it certainly is harmful because of the other Professor, secondary we don't effects. We really don't we want to get on the track of reality here. The headline says legalization. This bill, this Medical Marijuana Act, does not legalize marijuana. Basically, 
the act was drafted as somewhat of an insidious attempt to don't legalize say that. Don't it. Say that, Adam. Hold don't on. Say that, Adam. Quit interrupting. Don't, yeah. don't Quit point, interrupting. Don't point at me. Don't well, then say I'll that, start Adam. interrupting. If the word insidious act comes don't out, that, I'll Adam. have to jump don't in. Say that, that, Adam. Adam. Don't say that. Don't, don't, don't well, read into the intent of the people well, that, that drafted it. But there was nothing about legalization of medical marijuana. It was only for medical purposes only. I can't read their intent because it's very clear that the drafter of this statute from Washington, D.C., works for a lobbyist outfit whose intent is to legalize marijuana. That may be the intent, but it was not passed that's not but as an attempt. That's to, exactly right. Attempt to legalize we, marijuana. We do not Let the professor have, finish, please. Not I'm have, not going to be yelled at again, Chuck. We, we do not have legalized marijuana in Michigan. What we have is a broad universe of, of unlawful activity with an exception to being penalized if you meet this statute in specific terms. It's not legalization. In right. fact, it's broad. Except it's Chuck, broad what, criminal. What activity. does that have to do? What does that have to do with the discussion? The whole point is, is that you raised a point, Charlie. You asked one question. You asked Rick, and then you asked Chuck, which is w whether or not medical marijuana or marijuana gives anybody any sort of palliative effect. What's the difference whether or not we're not going to go back and reopen the so, the well, box? you're trying system. to do that. No, no I'm not. I'm not with the voters, though. You, it's all done. No, right it's now. done. So we no, have over. But no, Professor, are done. you saying that there's no medicinal value in medical marijuana? Here's what I'm saying. Answer that question. Here's please. what I'm saying. Just answer that one uh, question. Are, are you please. Uh, are you the moderator? I'm sorry. I want Charlie to but, make you answer the question. Here's the idea. <laughs> what is the answer? Here, well, here's the idea that they have named several several things that are supposed to qualify plus chronic pain which is very ambiguous don't, and I don't know if anybody here would disagree that that's a very ambiguous but that's thing. that's for a doctor to determine though isn't it? And Charlie, well yes. it's not Charlie, for a doctor to determine. 27% of Michigan households are treating with chronic pain doctors right now meaning they've been prescribed opiates. There's no, no one's talking about that. These are the same people that have now moved to a natural form to treat their uh, serious condition. The real issues here are the, the terrible job that the state has done at even contemplating implementing this law. This is where the focus should be. But here's the problem though. A patient only has to go to a doctor one time. The doctor only has to say that you can have benefits from medical marijuana. There's no dosage. Here, there's Charlie, no follow-up. It's very easy. There's no treatment. Physicians have been true doing it that. True. Physicians have been doing it that way since the beginning of time. There's you a follow-up though if they prescribe opiates or Vicodin you know or and anything. You know what? The medical profession is the same profession that has been prescribing um, opiates, and they're the same ones that are doing the uh, medical marijuana certifications. The remedies are to deal with the licensing board. The remedies are to track those doctors. We don't need these legislative bills that are going to make it more difficult for doctors to come out and work within the community. Do you these think there should be any restrictions on doctors that to at least follow up, of which there's nothing in the law the, right now? They already exist within the law, Charlie. There is there's the professional licensing board, and if a physician is out of line, you send out an investigator to find out what's happening. That's the way it's always been done. Ch Ch Charlie, here's... Yeah. This is, again, we're, we're and I, this is the, the most salacious part of this conversation seems to be to go back and revisit 2008. If there are abuses in the Medical Marijuana Act or in the, the application of it, then those should be dealt with. I don't think that there should be, that, that the abuses should be ignored. I don't think that, Ms. that Mike thinks that they should be ignored. If there are doctors who are certifying patients without actually doing a, a thorough job, then you know what? Then they can be dealt with, but they can be dealt with with the medical licensing board. Well, Charlie, and, here's, and here's the challenge I have. The challenge I have is that every time we have one of these conversations, we get the same guys to come back and talk about re the same issue that we started with. I let's talk about let's now. Not go to let's go let's right not now. go to 2008. Let's go to let's addressing, go to, addressing right. the issues that Neil brought forth is, is in a beginning infancy stage with up to 19 amendments and separate bills that are pending in Lansing. One of those bills would demand a real patient client relationship where a right. physical examination occurs right. and it wouldn't allow that, uh, that's email the internet that, that, certification. That's, that's that's the the doctor, Let me get here. Another one of the bills that's pending in, legis in the legislature, correct me if I'm wrong, is that you have to live in the state a year before you can obtain a, a, a caregiver card? I think that's one of the bills, right? First What's of all, Charlie, I, you know, I was in law enforcement for over 48 years in charge of the narcotic division in Detroit uh, back in the 70s and the 80s. And I'm going to tell you what, uh, it doesn't matter if it's crack cocaine, heroin, or even marijuana. I think the law is bad, and I, I certainly oppose legalizing even medical marijuana because there are so many abuses. And what you're creating, you're creating a criminal enterprise. Uh, you see more and more people, they're not in it, these caregivers are not in it to take care of, to have the compassion for people. 
they're in it for the money. Five, the same thing with money. same thing with the 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 look, at, look, at the look at all the dispensaries that we've closed down in Oakland County. Hundreds of thousands of dollars. It's not another generation. Not another generation. Ten million dollars brought in by the state, and this is still. Let's just go back to the specifics. Professor, the specifics here are the most important. I have a client. I have a client, for example, who has multiple sclerosis. Okay, Neil, go ahead. I have a client who has multiple sclerosis. Who had who, and that is not a specific identified illness within the Medical Marijuana Act because it has so many different constellations and so many different. It's not specifically identified because it has so many different types of ways that it can manifest itself. And I want to tell you, this is a guy who's about our age who had absolutely who had no relief whatsoever from pain medications until he began to use medical marijuana. And I want to tell but you... Are we going back to 08? That's, that's no, but I want to tell you... Is that, you said you were the one that didn't want to go back to 08. I want to tell you, I want to tell you, why, I want to tell you why, why I'm bringing him up today. Because here's a guy today who is growing his own marijuana under the act. And here's a guy today that has a card. And here's a guy that is terrified of a knock on the door when some neighbor of his happens to claim he smelled marijuana and some ambitious police officer who doesn't believe in the well, medical no, marijuana act. No, we're talking act. about generalities no, again. Yeah. Yeah. Wait a minute, wait a minute. You can't have it both ways. I'm going to. You can't have it both ways. I don't want to protect I'm going to protect the patients. Charlie, I'm not protecting anyone. I'm just going to protect that. He's by one patient. I'm going to protect that patient. I am. Are you going to leave my patient alone? Hold on, Neil. Let me ask Bob Dwyer. Mr. Fisher, are you going to leave my patient alone? Enough, I Neil. promise to. He, he's a, okay. He's a, he's a professor. He can't do anything. But Bill Dwyer can. <laughs> Assuming that's that's what he's the guy I'm worried about. You're not going to go out there and bust someone that's growing a, a, a plant who has a caregiver card and has done everything that the state says he's going to do. You're not going to bust that. Not at all. Not at all. And Chuck Basically, you, you're not either, right? But they are. But Charlie, oh, no, Charlie, no, no, no. Charlie, 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 Professor, may I have yes, more just one second? Here's the problem, is that the people that ought to know whether there's a card out there, the law enforcement, ought to know so that they don't break down the, uh, the door. They don't know. The people don't know? The law There's enforcement doesn't that know. They have no access. access to. They have no you access. You the cops don't know. They don't know. The cops don't know. They don't know. They don't know. You know why? Because there's been no training. Michael, Michael, Michael. There's been very little, Michael. Michael. if any, training. There's been $10 million that's brought into the state. We're still hearing law enforcement of 40 years calling it and comparing it to crack cocaine. They have no knowledge whatsoever. I said it's another drug. I'm right, but it's it medical. It's cocaine. used it's Charlie, used medically. And until have... you've seen the repair that it's done, the, 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 the health that it's brought to people, and the better standard of living but that they've been able to have. Operations Charlie, it's, not it's, it's, it's not illegal. It's illegal, illegal, illegal because the police are arresting. Don't we have another generality? Yeah. It's I'm illegal standard of living. Where does this come from? They arrested eight people in the dispensary in Waterford. I have a case, a specific case, where this is what I'm talking about, specifics. A specific client of mine where the police actually observed a medical marijuana certification showing that he was a medical marijuana patient. The police officer saw it. He ran the individual's name through Clemis, which is a local uh, database of individual names. He found out the location where this guy was living, went out to the house. He detected, he smelled marijuana, and he got a search warrant, busted on the door, and now this guy's in court, and he's fighting for charge? his life. What's the, the charge? Manufacturing marijuana. I have a but he's got a caregiver card, right? Yeah, and you know so what? That one, Neil, you should win. And you, know, you want to know what's happening? It's now? happening like that Is all that? over the state. I have another client pulled over Wait. in in a roadside. It's they show him his card. The time. Uh, they take him to his another house generality. and raid yeah, raid the house. But this is a specific case. Chuck Zemgia. The feds. The feds just came out. The federal oh, government. Time. Hold on, Neil. Hold on, Neil. The federal government just came out with a new order, every every professor. It shouldn't be with professor. That. Let me get to Neil. Then I'll get to you. Okay. Here's the federal government just came out with a new order yesterday, barring users, medical marijuana users, from possessing firearms. You agree with that? Well, heroin dealers and cocaine dealers and anyone on drugs should be running overkill? around with guns. Is this overkill? Is the anyone law high on drugs overkill? shouldn't have a gun in Chuck, their hand. Chuck, oh, you, you give Professor, your, what about this law? Professor, what about your, this law? Oh, is this overkill? I like it in prescription. Alcohol. Because those are, you right, shouldn't have a gun professor. either under that, under that reason. In other words, are they no no uh, possession whatsoever? Anybody with a have... medical marijuana car cannot possess a yeah. firearm. That's a little difficult. Charlie goes a little bit goes way beyond that, so though. Fed, Five like years in prison. The alcohol, the tobacco, and firearms. Let me get, let me get, let me get Rick. Wait, the, 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 the ATF letter actually, the ATF letter actually encourages 
persons that sell guns or sell ammunition to discriminate against people that are medical marijuana users. If you even suspect that a person has a medical marijuana card, you are not allowed to sell them ammunition. You are not allowed to sell them guns. You are now putting a decision in the hands of an untrained individual as to whether or not a person is impaired or is participating in a medical marijuana program and telling them that they're not allowed to transfer firearms to you. The ATF letter steps on very, very dangerous thin ice. And Charlie, do you know that the federal government currently, that unbeknownst to a lot of people, the federal government currently, and has since 1979, supplied, I think it was originally 10, 14, 14, 14 four left. people with, uh, there are four left, four people who are still surviving today, with approximately, I want to say eight ounces of, is it eight ounces? 300, 300 marijuana cigarettes, cigarettes a, month. a month. The federal government does The federal government, government does so that. Is this an experiment or is this no, some? No, uh, it is a licensed program that they have. Herb Roosevelt is one of the people he testified um, before the committee. So what are you saying then? The federal government uh, likes uh, medical marijuana? They know or, that it has it? medicinal value, yet they are but, but we're going criminalizing back to the weight, it. Though. That's, that's no, the, the, no you're asking about the gun. The, the, the reasoning in the gun is that these are drug users that are drug addicts, while at the same time they are sending uh, cans of cannabis cigarettes to at least four or five patients across the country and, and right now. we have now. veterans who are... Let me say this. You know, the National Guard Enforcement Team in Oakland County has executed over 100 search warrants on private homes, and only 5% of those people were halfway in compliance, only less than 5%. And Jessica no, Cooper was complaining that they were out of money that's to go prosecute that's not true. real that's serious that's crime. Not true. I have the cases. All their money that's not true. Bill, that's not true. Hold on, Bill, that's not true. Bill, that's not true. Hold on, Bill, that's not true. How about the Waterford dispensary? 18 arrested. All pled guilty. My client is pled guilty. Waterford. My client is not pled guilty. Bill, I represent somebody in that that's case. My client is not false. pled guilty. Everybody's cafe. Hold on. Hold my on. client is not pled guilty. On this pen. Hold on. Hold on. Bill, pled guilty. Bill, Bill read, you, guilty. read what, what's, your, what's your statement there? What's your point? I'm just saying that these uh, uh, places that are being raided, you know, we're finding that, for example, in Ferndale, 16 arrested, some pled out. No one is pending. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Big Ferndale, finish. Hold on, stop it. No, 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 no. Let him finish. Let him finish. That's my case. Let him finish. Nobody is pled out in Ferndale. No one. In fact, Judge Longo dismissed one of the defendants at a preliminary examination. The rest of us are scheduled for trial. We are supposed to start trial tomorrow. It got adjourned to January. That case is going to trial. No Some one is pled. So I'm talking about it. Right Nobody right has pled. Well, how much money have they spent on anyway? Well, how much is the prosecutor complaining about your own case? How much are these prosecutors costing? Professor, do you know how much these prosecutions are costing? I don't know how much they're costing, but I have a question I'd like you to ask. Please. All of us. Is, and that is whether everybody is, is of a, right, a like mind that the act is ambiguous in some important ways that needs to be, that n there are clarification is needed. No question but about that's, that's it. That's the nature of it. That's that's 18 years yeah, of practicing no law, Charlie. It. Every time I hear a prosecutor say that the law is confusing, it means the law doesn't favor him. That's the problem. Well, why are so this many law people was being broadly. arrested? Yeah. And he hurts everybody. That people stop arresting patients and allow them to get off the battlefield so on what the losing do we do, war on drugs. Yeah. We all agree that the law is confusing yeah. for a lot of reasons, from the doctors to the amounts to where you get this, right. etc. What right. do we do? I personally, I think that the legislature has an uphill battle because they, it takes a three-fourths vote to modify the act. I don't think that's going to work, but I think groups like this should get together and negotiate some changes and present them to the legislature. What change would you make? I think we could, we could clarify, do we have patient-to-patient -patient, uh, uh, deliveries yeah. permissible? Uh, should, should law enforcement have any information available to them so they don't kick doors down in advance? Correct. We need those kinds of things. Uh, what is medical use? I mean, it's a, it's a definition that really has no definition. Uh, and uh, all of those kinds of things, would, we could come to an agreement very quickly. Chuck, so do, yes. do you agree with the, prof with the professor well, talking about? Every point he made is contained in one of those 16 bills that I mentioned that are right. pending right now, and they do need to be addressed. I don't think the law is ambiguous. I think it was intentionally void of details do they need a three to allow 100,000. Do they need a three vote no. to pass those, uh, those laws? Oh, yeah. Well, some yes and some no. So uh, those, some yeah, some, I, some are of direct you... amendments to the initiative, some are not. And, uh, so we got a bundle of both. But I think the bill was drafted in a way to open the door for attorneys like this to drive a Mack like truck this. through it oh. and <laughs> say <laughs> you can have dispensaries and $100,000 people sell dope. Chuck and I worked in the prosecutor's office together. We worked side by side. He has the same bar on the right side. It just has a different name on it. Hold on. Okay.
This is what 63% of the voters in Michigan voted for, to permit registered and unregistered patients and primary caregivers, that means people with cards and people without cards, to assert medical reasons for using marijuana as a defense to any prosecution involving marijuana. There is no confusion about that. That is the fourth paragraph in the uh, proposal. That's what 63% mm. of the people Charlie, voted for. And you know what? That last part's happening. Are defendants in, in marijuana cases are being denied the right are to... They, are they allowed to assert the defense? How many people are being able to assert a defense in even even arguable or clear cases? Professor, the answer any is... Of them? Yeah, well, the law? Any? Yes, Harvey, yes, of any. course. If they comply strictly with the statute. That's ridiculous. And they're not That's complying. Not in there. They're not That's complying. Not in there. Some, any some defense. Of the cases, though, some, Neil, I think it was your case. Your client was growing medical marijuana in, a, in an outhouse with no top on it, right? It wasn't my case. Well, good, but it was a case, though. I, I usually don't go to places like I don't go to That's outhouses case, and though. roadhouses. But and, yet you don't have a problem with I, that, do you? If that person was arrested for growing his medical marijuana in an outhouse in full view of the world. Right? If it's not if it's not locked and enclosed, then I have a problem with it. You do not yeah. have a problem. I, if it's not if it is it, not locked, or no. capable of being locked and enclosed, then I have a problem with it. Okay. Yeah. So I, I personally I have a problem with with this law being used as a shield by ongoing drug operations that are that are selling drugs to everyone in the state who not, tell, don't have medical that's exactly now, now, right. certification. Are you no, telling me that you, are you telling me seriously Lou that Lou you Lou cannot Lou tell the the, the, you, the marijuana user from the from the marijuana trafficker? Time. You can't tell that? Charlie, this, where this that law is, from? the way that the law is is interpreted by some of my peers here would allow all the drug dealers to have the shield it's under the law. The law professor the law professor is saying they shouldn't have dispensaries in California and crime went up. There was a RAND study that just came out. The dispensaries bring down crime. This is, this no, is no, a red herring. Oh, no, no, no. no. The RAND study study is is that just the came out oh, no two way. days ago. No way. No way. Let me tell you what the four, no the four, the four no U.S. Marshall. attorneys in no. California just came out. They said the existence of dispensaries have increased drug dealing yes. to vulnerable population, underage youth, and people with mental health right. and addiction issues in our neighborhoods and sends the wrong message Rick, to the youth that? about Absolutely. drug use. Consi all right, everyone, consider the source of the information here. Our statistics is provided by the RAND Corporation, which is a, a well-known, internationally recognized, neutral think tank, which produces these type of studies. Yours were produced by four district attorneys, right? No, From the no. United States Attorney's no. Office. No. Right. You just no. read that, sir. We just saying that's part of what the, no, uh, there's let's, a let's number address of agencies another, that support. Let's address another issue. Studies well, in California. Michael, I want to ask, I want to ask Jerry Fisher if he agrees with something. Professor Fisher, if he agrees, with, the, Professor Fisher, if he agrees with something that uh, came out I'm that gonna, I saw today. I'm not going to hurt any of your clients. Okay, no, no, good, okay. good, good. My, my clients are pretty not tough. They can handle it. So, um, uh, Justice Scalia, who I know you're familiar with, I don't know if you have, I don't know anything about your politics or your your interpretation philosophy of the Constitution right. came out. He testified in front of the Senate, I think it was yesterday, and he actually criticized the uh, federal narcotics laws. Mm -hmm. And he criticized them because he felt as though the federal government spending its time prosecuting drug cases has, in some respects, reduced the quality of the, the federal bench, he said, and it also has, has taken valuable time away from the courts focusing efforts on other cases. And so here's my question. Do you, the whole purpose of the what's medical the, marijuana the question? Act, there you go. Okay. I want to know if you agree with that, number one, with the, that, federal, that, that federal law enforcement has no business actually inter interfering in local uh, you know, medical marijuana cases, for example, if someone... Okay, so let's get, let's get, the, let's get the presser. Federal well, law. I mean, the federal law is the law of the land. Do we, they should. Right. Then, obviously, the, the prosecutors and the judges have to deal with it. And, and, it's a and schedule my one was okay. that uh, uh, Jessica Cooper, for example, just made a speech to the Oakland County Board of Commissioners basically saying that it is medical marijuana, like any medical marijuana, like any marijuana, is illegal under federal law. That's correct. Therefore, That's correct. You don't have to enforce no. the medical marijuana right, provisions that's what I wanted to that know. was just passed. Yeah. So here's my next federal government can't is... make the states uh, enforce their law. That's what the Tenth Amendment prevents against. And if the states want to do it and they want to prosecute, then it's going to take place in state court. The federal and law well, trumps the federal law. 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 If the federal Charlie. government wants to come in and prosecute, and, and they are, in the federal court. And they are. Well, then let them do that, but don't use the state resources to do it because as we know, my second question is Charlie. The federal law. Let me get Chuck. Let me get The federal law is the one that needs to address this. I agree because the federal law trumps everything. Arguing about this the state laws is a, is a game where everyone's chasing themselves no, no, no. in this circles. Is, this is, this is the federal law trumps everything. It's illegal. This is, it's and also, that's what ultimately is going to be determined the, in the state. The reason why I wanted to ask Professor Fisher that is because, because you know, Mr. Dwyer brought out federal law enforcement. 
Chuck has brought out federal law enforcement. And none of us here are federal law enforcement officers. We aren't part of the executive branch, and we aren't part of uh, federal Congress. And so until, until the U.S. attorney or President Obama comes in and tells us that we, or Congress comes in and says that we can't actually enforce the Medical Marijuana Act, then can we finally please have those of us that are that act and, and prosecute and defend on the state level just focus on the state offenses and let and, and on the state let's stop talking about federal law and royal oak stop talking about federal law and warren or farmington stop well, talking about federal I let's actually just thought president state obama law came out with a uh, with a uh, an order from the justice department telling the justice department not to prosecute uh, uh, marijuana patients in states that have passed a medical marijuana law. That's still Professor? the case. That was October 2010, no. June 2011. Fast forward, and now that is reversed. No, 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 no. Oh, no, no, yes, no, it no, is. No, 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 what they, did, what they did is they changed their policy and said yes. they were going to, and they delivered letters to a number of states right. that took that information no, from the, the federal government, and it developed comprehensive legislation that they were about to enact That's to allow correct. for grows and dispensaries to be licensed from the state. And the U.S. Attorney's letter said, if you, Governor, sign those bills, we're going to arrest your state employees. The Hague Memorandum yeah. still yeah. says, exactly. the Hague Memorandum still says that patients... The Alexander Hague? No. Uh, it's named after uh, oh. U.S. Attorney Hague, H-A-A-G, okay. H -A -A -G gotcha. in California. The Hague Memorandum still says that they're not going to actually go after... Professor, I, I think that Hague, Hague Memorandum is no longer valid, and, and I think the, the June 2011 trumped it. Let but me ask point, you, Rick. That is the Hague Memorandum. In California, they've had medical marijuana uh, legal for a number of years. The, the state of California taxes medical marijuana, and it's actually creating a lot of jobs and money for the state. Isn't this something maybe we should do here in Michigan? Is to get rid of these people having these cards and turn it over to the state for regulation? Would you be in favor of that? No, I wouldn't be in favor of that because the purpose of having the Michigan Medical Marijuana Act is not to generate revenue for the state, but to empower individual patients to take advantage of a, of a, a medicine that they can't get at a pharmacy. To be able to take advantage of a, an opportunity to receive relief that doesn't come at a what huge cost. What about the cost. taxing ability? The state can make some money on this. Now, Andy Dillon, the, uh, the uh, treasurer of the state of Michigan, came out with a letter uh, which stated that the state of Michigan is not able to recoup any monies from the this program, not excise tax, not state tax, sales tax, not user tax. There are no ways for them to do that. So in order for that to be a reality, it would require a change in the Medical Marijuana Act itself. Bill Dwyer. I just want to clarify as far as law enforcement. I'm the only person here from law enforcement other than Chuck, who was the prosecutor. But I was too. Yeah, we're, 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 I was we're, a prosecutor in Oakland County. We're, we're, we're going to. Okay, I'm sorry. We should, we're <laughs> we should law, 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 law enforcement. But after his views, you can that. see why he's not a prosecutor. Uh, anymore. Say, now, law enforcement <laughs> is in a catch-22 with this law. That's how I defend If I can speak. If I can speak. Go ahead. Go ahead. Now, law enforcement is in a catch-22 with this law. You know, it's damned if we do, damned if we don't. You know, we get information. We're obligated to follow up on that information as far as an investigation. And that's what's been happening. In the majority of these cases, 90-some percent of these cases, are very, very valid, excellent investigations conducted by law enforcement in Oakland County or anywhere else in this state. In the traditional criminal investigations, without an, any new view as to medical marijuana, I've heard stories when they do execute the warrants, they get in, someone gets up off the couch to show a card, and they're thrown to the ground, and the gun's put to the back of their head because oh that's boy. the way they're used uh, to doing it. Now, yeah, Charlie. But listen to me, yeah, let me say this. The idea of the state running this program is, is, should be concerning. They are six months behind with getting the cards out. They have not even made any attempts to get new conditions onto the, onto the registry for other patients of other conditions to be able to apply for. So the idea of the state getting involved with it is a joke. Well, They've been a complete charge. disaster for this program. that's required by the Until the feds change the law. Because if the state gets involved and starts affirmatively acting like that, they're going to be violating but federal law. Is there any chance the federal already. government will get involved in medical marijuana? Well, sure. I don't the, think, Charlie, I don't think the trouble, Charlie, the trouble here... Uh, is is complaining about enforcement of a medical marijuana law. My true belief is is that the state of Michigan doesn't have a medical marijuana law. We have something that's labeled that. It's completely different from what normal people would think is medically related. It doesn't have the traditional distribution mechanisms of of controlled substances drug stores, at a drugstore. And all the all the complaints and the arguments stem from what this everything else this law tries to. Uh, encompass and everything else attorneys try to interpret and, and build into this that doesn't exist. But you guys, city commissioners as well. Let's not fake. Let's not forget city commissioners on that issue as well. No, I. I Should we go? Some people tried to actually create a system that was 
there are some folks who tried to create a system that resembled pharmacies. I'm not saying that was right or wrong, but there are people that tried to create a system that resembled pharmacies, and the police went and they actually, the police departments went, at least one in particular, the Oakland County Sheriff's Department, they actually authorized their police officers to create fake medical marijuana cards. Mm -hmm. And then the people went in, the officers with fake well, medical marijuana cards. The law doesn't allow them to Why? Do that. Why would you, do that? That Why would you pretend to be somebody who's That's ill? Why would you? Into what? Into a medical marijuana pharmacy? Of, into trickery and lies hey, and deceit? That's if the if way there's the no illegal activity business? going on, then there's but nothing Bill, to hide. But Bill, Chuck just said that... Chuck just said, but Chuck just said that, that it was, we don't have a system that's like pharmacies. And all I'm saying is some people tried to make them no, like pharmacies. We need, we need a legal system that's like pharmacies, not the law we have here now. Chuck, will you we have a law. You, then you need to like draft, draft, draft one, Chuck? It to the will you draft one? Draft yeah. it and, and until that you time, draft one? Until that time, this law needs to be amended or repealed because it's causing way too much grief for everyone. You guys can make it easy. Who? Leave it alone. For who? 63% of the people said let's look at the way it is. All right, we're about a halfway mark right here. We are going to, we want you, we know, we want to know what you're thinking. 248-589-7778. This is the Oakland Press and the Community Media Network Town Hall Meeting on Medical Marijuana. I want to now go to Steve Fry. Steve Fry, who has been anxiously compiling questions and emails from our uh, viewers here. Steve Fry, what do you have for a question for the panel? Steve? Okay, first a couple comments and then the final one will be the question. Uh, someone, Road Rage, asked, with so many communities going broke, why spend... Uh, or waste millions of dollars going after the sick. Uh, could this be money? Could this money be spent keeping the libraries open? Referring to one of our earlier town halls about the Troy Library. Um, and uh, someone asked, "Will the state of Michigan keep preying on the sick and the weak?" All right, let's, uh, let's answer that question. Let's answer that question. Who wants to answer the question? Well, there's the, the, no question okay. about it. As far as this, this this law is creating a problem for law enforcement, as far as our resources. Would it be easier if but, this law was legalized? But, you you can't can't law. It be e the law is the law be it enforcing marijuana, cocaine, heroin, we have a responsibility. And if we get information of a illegal activity, then it's our responsibility or it's law enforcement's responsibility to investigate. But, Charlie, I know this is not the time. I don't want to go totally off the topic, but if, medical, the, if, the meta, if marijuana was legalized, wouldn't it be easier for law enforcement? Sure it would be. Are you in favor of legalization? But is that the right no, thing to do? You know, if you look right now, 80% of the people that are in jail or prison are there because of, of drug addiction, be it marijuana, heroin, or cocaine. So, you know, legalizing marijuana is not the solution. It's not the solution. Well, see, my, my clients opinion. are in jail because they've actually committed real crimes, like, uh, um, you know, like robbery. Like like the outhouse. Outhouse. No, 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 no. Most <laughs> of my, I don't, no, no, no. I got clients who are in jail for, for real stuff, like fraud and theft and yeah, deceit. But it'd, be, not, it'd be easier for law enforcement if we took the fraud laws off the books, sure. too. I, no, if, because if the criteria there's a victim is that's associated if, with if that. The criteria this, is what's that's easy. But that's not the solution. Maybe we should. If fraud cured cancer, maybe we should. Sure, but that's not, sure it would be. But that's not the solution. I'm, I'm not advocating legalizing it. I'm not advocating one way or the other. I'm just saying, to answer the to answer the writer's question, yes, yes. the person that wrote Mr. Fry or wrote Steve, asked the question: Wouldn't it save local communities valuable and scarce resources? The answer, yes. And the answer, of course, is yes. Is no. And it would cut it's down absolutely, down. absolutely no. 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 Because what is one of the most important resources we have? Please don't tell. Please don't say children. Children. Because I'm a, Absolutely. Children. I love my kids. Absolutely. My kids are, don't even. And go what there. is marijuana? That's offensive. That's offensive. It's what is it going to do to them emotionally, I educationally, just, occupationally? Jerry. What is it going to do to them? The, we, we don't know. Right. 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 They have no idea. Wait a minute. The children, I just did these they have no idea. The children are the ones who make the worst decisions about drugs. So the first decision children make, make that, are, that are bad are about drugs. They make more bad decisions about drugs than anyone else. And with the quantity of these drugs increasing in a logarithmic progression, they're just going to have more. Michael, you, do you agree with that? No way. That absolutely not. Ridiculous. There is no way The Obama administration has a report on that says the exact same thing. In response to the question, in response to the question, there is millions of dollars spent in prosecuting marijuana arrests in Michigan alone. If they took those dollars and put it on for real crimes, you know, marijuana patients are, are low-hanging fruit. It's easy. There's low risk. You can smell it. You get into a car. You smell it in a house. This is easy. It's not challenging. They, they, this is serious investigating. What do they find when they get in there? Danger? No. They go with guns? And, and what are they trying to stop? What, what kids are getting hurt? That's what I want to know. The reality is that 
uh, the red herring that's being offered here of some kind of danger of medical marijuana uh, is, a, is a slap in the face of the voters. You have 63 percent of the people who oh, want this. Well, Where are wait the people that are against Read the ballot Where are again. the people that are against it? Read the Professor. ballot proposal again and you show me. I just me, read it. You show me the. the I know that it's not happening. I know that people aren't getting right to a jury trial. You show me I know the word that. minor or children in that ballot proposal. It ain't there. What yeah, point does that have to do with it? What point does that have to do with it? But children can't have it if they don't have a doctor's prescription for it, though. Hold on, hold on. Neil, Neil, Neil. If you have a case, I will volunteer my services right now. If Chuck Semchina, Bill Dwyer, or Jerry Fisher knows of one kid that has actually gotten medical marijuana who shouldn't have, I will personally volunteer my office, my time. I will devote all my resources. Well, it's going to be a plea because there's, no, at, there's no, no issue no, there. I will, go, I will go after that parent, yeah. and I, we, will go, we will actually sue the parent, and I'll have Chuck Semchina, Jerry Fisher, and Bill That's Dwyer as co-plaintiffs. Right. Co Let's do it. If there we know enough. There aren't appreciate enough. you saying that. There, you don't know of one, Jerry Fisher. Oh, I do. Right. There aren't enough. But if it's enough, let's go. All right. Let's go. All right. All right. If, all right let me get. All right, Steve Fry. Let's do it. All right, let me get Steve Fry. Steve Fry has another uh, question uh, from a uh, from a viewer. But, by oh, the way, it's the OaklandPress.com or two four eight five eight nine seven 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 eight. Steve Fry, another question, please. I have a lot of personal friends. I'm a veteran, and I have a lot of personal friends who are veterans. And I know a lot of guys who actually uh, use marijuana so they can safely sleep next to their spouses. Uh, a lot of infantry soldiers have a lot of angry and violent nightmares, and um, I, I know them personally. And I've seen I've seen what it, I've seen it help them. Uh, they calm down. They're not as jittery. They're not checking people's shoes uh, when they walk into a room. And I'm just wondering uh, who you're protecting by keeping them from getting marijuana. Like, like if you can tell me that you're protecting Kentucky somebody. In Ohio huh? State. Yeah, I, I did see the Ohio State, so uh, I don't know what happened there. Listen, Chuck Semchina. Everyone has a friend who's a good drug user or a client who's a good drug dealer. I'm just saying here that I think I about 95 percent of these of these people who are selling are doing it for different reasons than what you just described. But those people should and be arrested, though. Those people should be arrested. Those people should be arrested. You, you wouldn't approve of that, though, Chuck, because that's someone with post-traumatic stress syndrome, which isn't technically on the registry, and you'd say that that person got their card I fraudulently. Never, I never said Rick. that person should not, theoretically, should never have You just called a them drug addicts. Huh? Yeah. You just said you said you said he's a person he described. And, is, and is I think it is in a minority it. compared to the Mike, large number Rick, of users. Rick, right, didn't you just say, Rick, didn't Chuck Santina just say, quote, everyone has a friend who has a good A, a known drug, drug dealer. Yes, yeah, so a, a nice drug, drug, good drug dealer. Said, drug I, I don't know anybody. I don't have any friends, I guess. Rick, what do you want to say? The most dealer. important thing to realize is that in any community, in any group of people, whether it's law enforcement or whether it's medical marijuana patients, there will be a few bad actors. Chuck, we should not all judge law enforcement based on the actions of the Romulus police chief and his persons. Okay. Not all law enforcement persons should be judged by that standard and not all medical marijuana patients should be held up to the accountability of the worst of our community. I think it's an invalid uh, statement to make I and I absolutely, excuse me, I, I absolutely, excuse me Chuck, here. excuse me, I've, I've listened to you for a long time, let me just finish what I'm saying, okay. and I absolutely support Neil with his statement that if you know the name of a case where a child has received medical marijuana from a licensed medical marijuana distribution center, say it right now or shut up. Go get say the it right now. Go get the parents. Well, stay parents. off that issue. Well, we still have 20 more minutes. Don't shut up. Don't say, don't shut up now. We still have more to go, though. All right, we don't know. Yeah. Anybody? Okay, we'll uh, Steve, Fry. Steve Fry. Steve Fry, you have. I'll help out. Right. Steve Fry, you have another question. Steve. From the audience. Uh, yeah, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of a comment and partly a question. Uh, when you say that children are in danger from medical marijuana, I want to know how many of you have seen in a dispensary. I want to know how many of you have seen them walking down the street like you so described, like they've got a trick-or-treat bag with drugs uh, uh, carrying them down the street. It's just mischaracterization. It's offensive on every level. I'm an HIV patient, and I'm a caregiver, and I'm a patient, and I will not have you characterize me as a criminal and threaten me at my door. Oh, 18 guys from the Oakland County Sheriff's Department showed up at my door after they already knew who I was. They knew what I'm doing. I went and knocked on their door and told them. For them to come there and mischaracterize my, try and say that my criminal past was somehow making me not a caregiver and they want to arrest me, this is nothing but a farce because it's a con about control of money. That's what this is about. You guys want control of money because if we're low-hanging fruit, it's easy to get to police to profit themselves. It's policing for profit. When they can go out there and all. they don't have not to, listen, all. you guys don't have to have a know, warrant. I, I, I want to finish, please. Let me finish. Let's let the Let's let Bill Dwyer answer. Age, Bill. Underage youth. Bill. Yeah. The Sheriff's Department can give you many examples of people, young people that are 
using the medical marijuana or getting them from the dispensaries. And it's we'll provide that no information one's, no one's to you. Yeah. Well, no one's in favor of this. No one's in favor of this on the town. But it's happening. That's all I'm well, saying. Well, that's law enforcement or the like, parents. Yeah, and it would happen Bill, much, much okay. more readily Listen, on the street. Uh, of all things that come, uh, you, you, we don't know each other very well. And I may be loud and I may be boisterous. But one thing that no one's ever accused me of is not being a devoted father. I care about my three kids, and I'm sure you folks care about your kids equally. I don't, I don't have a gun. I don't have any weapons. But you know what? I would do whatever I had to to protect my kids. And I would do that for my kids' friends as well. And so if there is a child somewhere who's a child, 13, 15, 12, 10, 7, and you guys know of it, instead of just talking about it generally, I've invited you now four times. Write the name down. Right, Tell me where to go. Everybody agrees. So, but if a child I, 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 gets medical marijuana, about, that's, that's not right. Right. Let's not take not children easy. and put them out in front of... We would agree that it is happening. Bill. I, but I don't know that if it's happening, tell me. Happen. We dispute the fact. Professor, I haven't seen it happen. I'm you about evidence. We don't agree. I don't know it. This subject arose under the question of whether marijuana should be legalized. That's where it arose, not under interpretation of the act. And that's where I was suggesting that we need to take a little better look at the impact on children. I'm not commenting right. on so we're not, right. okay, I'm not so commenting we're not on legalization. I'm just talking Nobody about is talking about legalization right. Charlie, at the present time. The thing, Chuck. The Obama administration Department of Drug Policy has a website. They've got studies themselves. This is the, this is the president's department. They analyze the drug use of children. The marijuana usage is up, and they, 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 they specifically point out problems with dispensaries and in states that have medical marijuana laws. They correlate the drug use of marijuana with lower grades and flunking out in school. Sure. It is a problem. Well, it's documented. Right. It's out there. Well, it's, it's everywhere. It's abused. That's no, true. We're not, but we're not, we're talking, but we're not talking, we're talking about medical marijuana, right, though. This is the Christmas so tree you, argument. Are you saying that What's if medical Christmas marijuana is allowed to exist, yeah. that kids are going to get medical I'm marijuana? Jewish. Is that what you're saying? Is that what you're this, saying? Is, this, this is, is the Christmas tree, tree, tree argument. What Christmas tree? I'm Jewish. The menorah argument. The menorah argument. The Hanukkah bush. 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 The Christmas tree. And Charlie knows this argument. Let me finish. The dreidel argument. Because, well, it's because the quantity that could be grown under this act is so vastly great uh, than what one patient can use. There's going right. to be excess. That's, right. that's what the Court of Appeals case was all about, yep. the excess getting this. sold at a dispensary. This is, this is there this excess, is, Michael? This, this may be for limited people, but the reality is that the way the Court of Appeals has been ruling doesn't even recognize the real needs of the people that need it most. Because now we have situations where if you really are taking care of someone who's dying, they're throwing up in a bucket and you go and get certified and you've never grown cannabis before in your life, you have no idea, and you watch every YouTube video in one night, where are you going to go to start? You can't because there's no patient-to-patient -patient transfer. You've got to go into some place and do a transfer just to acquire the seeds or plants to grow. And then... And then, if you're lucky, after three or four months, maybe you'll have a plant that you can give to a sick one. And the law, the way it's being uh, ruled in the Court of Appeals, is not allowing the people that really need it to acquire well, cannabis. Is that a shortcoming of the statute? It is. That's no, it's not. Why, why, it's not. Why don't you say that to President Obama's administration? Because we're talking about state law. They could change the law. Let's talk about state law. Because there will, no be a, there will never be an you. effective state I'm law you to until the federal you, law is I'm asking changed. you to look at yeah, things hey, a little Mike, bit differently. Different, from Mike, the most Mike, sick person I have a different who is question. dying and needs Chuck, cannabis you, now. Chuck is in. I don't want to change anything other than the federal law if that helps. Chuck, you're currently a public official. Mike and I are not. Can you arrange for Mike and I to have that sit down with, with President Obama? Because if you can, I'm sure Mike would take you up on that opportunity. Yeah, this is what, well, you certainly <laughs> arranged to show up here tonight. You could show up on his door. Well, we call. will. If you can, if you can arrange excited. it, we'll be there. 248-589-7778, theoldcompress.com, if you'd like to get in on this conversation. Steve Fry is standing by. He's got yet more questions and comments on this town hall meeting regarding medical marijuana. Steve. Yes, first I'll read a comment and then a question. Uh, Jack writes, I personally feel that marijuana has been useful for chemo patients dealing with nausea. Uh, he goes on to say a little bit more about how it could help people. But his biggest concern is with the marijuana laws that it got too out of control. I know for a fact that people were buying it from dispensaries and reselling to the public. I voted for this law but never dreamed it would become a market for every drug dealer in town. And right, let's, have, let's, get Rick, let's get Rick to answer that question. Is it out of hand? Because the dispensary, there, and by the way, as I understand the act, there's, the, the word dispensary isn't even in the act. It's not even there. Absolutely true. The word dispensary is not in the act. So you don't have a problem then if there's a dispensary that crops up 
that the police would uh, arrest the people running that dispensary. It oh. violates the law. Yes. Well, depends on which law you're talking about. In well, the city law. of Ferndale itself, they've empowered uh, dispensing locations and cultivation locations within the city, uh, codified it in ordinance law. In that particular scenario, ordinance law protects it, state law protects it. Why should law enforcement have any interest in, in that facility? Has, has the court of appeals already well, I, 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 that well, can for, well, Professor, yes. can Ferndale yes. undo yes. what the state did? Ferndale is, is a pecking is order. Ba here. Basically, an instrument of the state. Ferndale takes its authority from the state. If the state doesn't authorize it, they can't do it. I might get the professor well, to agree with me on this as a solution, because I, I think this is notated in this white paper. But a bill that actually addresses some of these issues of zoning. Uh, where money is going to be spent, how it's going to be taxed, is really what we're talking about. These are much of the problems that we're talking about. These dispensaries and whatnot, the business aspect, can be solved by a different type of statutory regulatory scheme, a dispensary bill. You wouldn't disagree with that, would you? And then you can leave the Medical Marijuana Act alone to its... In, 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 to what it was intended for, to allow patients to grow and caregivers to interact with them, yeah. and to provide Professor, cannabis. with all due respect, with all due respect, I cannot possibly agree with that, that, that we would, would allow dispensaries and leave the act the way it is. We have to change the act. If you don't mind me, if you don't mind me finishing up with what yeah, I originally started right. with, the fact that, that Professor Fisher feels that individual cities are not right. able to yeah. set their own uh, standards for adopting medical marijuana within the community seems to fly in the face of all the communities that already have adopted no, no, all of these standards. You're, you're coming from, it, from the opposite no. standpoint. You're I'm saying the guys. a community that is authorizing something that state law prohibits. I, That's what you're suggesting. Charlie, as a trial lawyer, they I was can't always do that. taught when, when, when the judge or jury had a question, we tried to focus what the, on, the, the, on the judge or jury's question. And to answer the, the, the writer's question, if somebody went to a dispensary who was a patient, a, a lawful dispensary, and they acquired marijuana. And then they walked out and they sold that marijuana on, on the street to someone that was not a medical marijuana patient, or just sold it to someone on the street, and that person should be prosecuted. Absolutely true. Period. Oh, but, but, that's that's good. Good. but period, that's it. That's Still the answer. You want me, you want me to answer? Hasn't the, that's that's the, that's the Court of Appeals already ruled that they're illegal? No. Yeah. No. Closed no. down? Not at all. Uh, uh, not that right? That's a problem right there. Not that is the problem. Bit. The Court of Appeals didn't say that. They said patient-to-patient -patient transfers where there's money involved that's is not really, allowed. There are right. still three other types of transfers that they acknowledge that they chose not to get to. So the law enforcement training that I'm asking for as to really understand what the Court of Appeals is saying is Charlie, not Charlie, the Court I'm of sure Appeals, the Chuck, let's tell you right now, the, the Court of Appeals has outlawed 99% of the dispensaries because most right. of them are that's operating that's for profit. Why are you coming up with these statistics that you're just making up at and, the moment? And I'm proud to say that in Royal Oak we have a, a enlightened and progressive city commission that has passed zoning ordinances, so we don't have dispensaries and grow houses. So we haven't had a lot of arrests. Do you have medical because, marijuana? Uh, Do you have medical marijuana? We don't marijuana? have dispensaries and grow houses. So ha having been to those council have, commission have, meetings, have, I, I can tell you, that. enlightenment is not what I would describe royal oak. disregard completely state law? That's a better question, which well, is what we're hearing. Can, right. can the cities disregard state law? Absolutely not, but, I, but the way... Uh, uh, Mr. Semchina described that it doesn't disregard state law; it's working within state law. It does prohibit well, uh, anyone from inside. Right? It prohibits right. any patient that lives inside Royal Oak from possessing cannabis, and from possessing medical right marijuana, that. and be able to use that uh, that uh, and, and, as, actually, as their doctors actually, recommended. The, the, well, that's Royal not what he said. That's that's not, not the, the Royal Oak ordinance right. actually doesn't prohibit people from possessing right. marijuana. The, 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 the Royal Oak from, ordinance prohibits patients from cultivating or growing their own marijuana in, in their own home. Yeah, mm -hmm. but forget about dispensaries. We're not talking about that. We're dispensaries talking about are the worst principle. horror that's Just developed in this, under this whole law. The the Just talk the about the patients. Just you know, talk about you know, the patients. Position on it. Most cities have taken a moratorium. Right. They're right. doing Just nothing. The we did a moratorium for a period of time. Then Chuck, we passed pa this law, the question, and it's Chuck. been very effective. Chuck, is the cancer cities patient? have a choice Chuck, is the because cancer the state so law well, gives us a choice. Chuck. We exercise Chuck. that choice. You're going to answer the question. Professor period. Fisher said well, state law gives you no choice. No choice, Professor Fisher said. You can argue with us on the ground. 248-589-7778. You certainly have said no choices are available to the local communities whatsoever. Steve Fry, Steve Fry, you've got another question there. Steve? Yes, Rick and Royal Oak asked, why not put this back on the ballot and let the voters decide? Side. Excellent they choice. Did, yeah. Why would you? What, what, what you don't want? You're not in favor of that. Then, you I don't care. You? Whatever the voters want is what they well, get. I, I don't care. Well, they got it. I think the voters Bill first of all were misled. I think they oh, thought oh, that oh, it was oh, oh, terminally oh, ill people. Oh, they were misled. Yeah, but these, who are these? But, but everyone, on, everyone that loses sixty-two percent. But I'm a voter. The numbers are seventy percent of people that are in favor. The reality is this: you've got the medical marijuana community. 
and you've got this other uh, group that are opposing it, which are in the minority. And then you've got the rest of the state that is in favor of it. It's now at 70 percent. You don't think this economy in Michigan wants law enforcement to stop wasting its resources and put it towards something more productive? Amen. Seriously. Sorry, how's this? How's this? 63 percent of the general public voted in favor of the Medical Marijuana Act. 34 percent opposed it, right? The 34 percent are currently the ones who are administering and enforcing the Medical Marijuana Act. Uh, in a lot of ways, that's absolutely true. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Are Chuck, you? you disagree? Did you, did you vote for it? Did you vote for it? Did you vote, did you vote for it? I read it, so I voted against it. Ah, okay. okay. Well, I voted against it. I'll tell you right now. 34%? And I agree. You're trying I to agree. It. People voted for medical marijuana, but I mm. go back to my statement. I don't think we have a medical marijuana law. There's a disconnect, I think, between what people think they were voting for and what's buried You're in this right. law right. and with the Chuck, interpretations I, I, that have resulted. Hold on, Chuck, would you, would you look at the Neil, camera and tell the, the, your citizenry in Wyalog that you think that they're dumb? Because that's what you're saying to your it's citizenry. Stupid, no, it's a you're stupid saying, question, Neil. Well, I'll but tell you're the saying to your citizenry, Oak, this I'll tell the citizens of Royal Oak right now that when they came to the podium, he thinks you're dumb. And, and, with, and with hundreds of them coming to the podium before uh, we voted on this ordinance, that I followed their direction and I voted the way they wanted. He thinks you're dumb. 63% right. of you voted for it. And he Steve, says that you all right, the OakenPress.com is over. We have a couple moments left. Steve Fry, I don't know that you've got another comment over there. Steve? Oh, from an audience. Hi, I'm sorry. It's me again. Um, <laughs> Ohio State. It's still it's Ohio State, State though. My shirt again. But uh, I, I see, like, I see the feathers are all up, and you, you guys are very passionate. I'm just, because I'm just a person, and I don't get to do this every day, I have questions. And I just asked, like, who are you protecting? and no one answered. I'm just curious as to why, like, why, it, why, because if, if a veteran should, like, if, if you can save, like, 50 kids from not getting in trouble by denying a veteran his cannabis, veterans have sacrificed a lot and they're willing to do it. But you need to be able to tell them who you're protecting by taking it away. And that's, I just, if you could answer that, I'd really appreciate I, it. I'm protecting patients and caregivers. I think, I think you mean that question for Bill Dwyer and for, Mr. Fisher and I, Chuck Simchina, he's protecting I, a figurative somebody. I'm, I'm protecting residents and, and, and children, in my mind. Who, specifically? Every, well, everyone has a mother or a grandmother living somewhere in the city. There's rental houses on every street. And any 18-year-old could go out there and rent a house and start growing dope, and who knows That's what Ken, kind of trouble could, is may, sh who possible. But there isn't any proof of it. Have the black it's right there. Specific. Before, you got people in the business now, not compassionate people trying to help out people so way, that are terminally ill, people that want to make big bucks. But do you really think there's any difference, there, though? Ways. But is there there's really any ways. difference, though, when we have a medical marijuana law than what it was when we didn't have a medical marijuana law? What's happening right now as far as the medical marijuana at dispensaries, it's, it's like illegally selling heroin and cocaine what? because they're making big yes. profits at there's it. Some of them. That's, that's, I'm not listen. saying. Some of them. Here you go. Bill, you probably there's support Mike, right? Mike, 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 there's, Mike, there's a better solution. There's a better solution. you got a black right. market there. You've got people, people that are medical marijuana the patients not to help who are people. trying to be transparent. They are coming into a, into a city and they're trying to be transparent. Come in, police. See what we're doing. We want to show you what we are trying to do. Helping sick people. Having them come in. Checking cards. That's what these dispensers are doing. And they're being treated like they're criminals. And there's been no change. We're, it's just going into dispensaries, calling them criminals. There's been no... Uh, movement on the opposite side to try to come to the medical marijuana community and understand and find a middle had ground. Convictions. We've had people plead that out. is that is turning people that have good intentions without any criminal intent into criminals Bill, and putting them in jail. Why would they plea out? I'll tell, I'll tell you why they plea out, Bill. Because, you because you hold on, I'll tell you. I'll tell you. I'll tell you. I'll tell you, I'll tell you, I'll tell you why they plea out. Go ahead. Hold on, Jerry. They plea out because they're scared. They're scared. But they got a representing them. But they're scared. Mr. Langton, I would, I would take on the challenge. I would love the challenge. All right, we've got about five minutes left. Steve Fry, I'm going to give it to you. I know you've got some comments over there from the OaklandPress.com. Steve Fry. Uh, someone asked, um, well, there were several people commenting about when you were talking about the children, about the difference between alcohol and marijuana, noting the ease with which uh, people can buy booze when they're underage. Uh, but someone else asked, uh, with the outbreak of new designer drugs, and all the rest of the narcotics, how has it become a priority for law enforcement to become concerned with my medicine? Bill Dwyer? We're enforcing the law. They have a responsibility, as I said earlier. It's a catch-22. If, if we get information, an investigation has to be conducted. And that's what your law enforcement people are doing. They're conducting an investigation based on information received. It would be the same thing with any other type of crime. But and, there's a difference between knock and talk and a SWAT tag. With help. Sorry. Information right, exactly. with help. That's the problem. Exactly. But, the, but the SWAT tag. You know, sometimes, Charlie, approach. the people who are in power, who have the discretion to, to conduct an investigation or not, they don't have to. They don't. 
They, they get word that there's someone who's never been a if problem before. If you're speeding, before. you don't have to be. They don't have over. to, but they get there's word that there's some there's it. some little old lady who they, they don't they don't go ask any neighbors. They don't ask the neighbor if the person next door has appeared to suffer or have a cane or walks with a, a walker. They get a search warrant and then they go kick in the door and then they. But they they can only get the search warrant if they got probable cause. So they've conducted their but, investigation. But they, no, that's not a very that's not a very tough standard. I mean, well, I mean, that's a about, pretty how low. How about, how about this? Sign a, judge not sign a why don't you add this? How about this? Why not? Why not add a second that? layer that yeah. if you're going to if you establish probable cause, why not have a second layer that actually instead of police having access to the medical marijuana database, why don't you have a second judge that the police have to take their search warrant to or their application their affidavit to? And have a second judge who has you private more access. You got more uh, no, 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 as 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 the legislation that's pending right now would well, have that disseminate to law enforcement, put it in a yeah, pharmacy. No, you've got. Yeah, that's not federal. That's what our visit to Obama is going to do. They conducted over 100 search warrants on private homes. They were conducted because neighbors were calling in. They were seeing people coming and going from that home. So the Which law home? enforcement conducted the investigation at probable cause to execute the search warrant and arrest those people. Which case? Oh, let me just, right, there was 100 on, search warrants. In the remaining moments, hold on. Hold on. In the remaining moments that we have left, we only have a couple minutes. I'm going to go around the. I'm going to go around the panel right here. If you were king of the world, you had the power to make the Medical Marijuana Act anything you wanted. The biggest change, one change that you could make that would help this cause. I'm going to start over here. Rick Thompson, Medical Marijuana Magazine. That the medical marijuana cards, once issued by the state, are noble to law enforcement. The possession of the card means exactly what the act says, that you must release this person without prejudice if they're in possession of an amount of marijuana that's legitimately allowed. That that card should be honored the way that the law originally states it should be. So no real change, no major change in the law then? Well, let's put pictures on the cards. Let's fix the doctor-patient relationship so we can't do Skype approvals. But other than that, let's keep it solid. Michael Kermorn. I'd like law enforcement and Chuck specifically to spend some time with sick people that have gained benefits from using cannabis. So they saw how they've gone from using an enormous amount of opiates to none at all, or curing skin cancer with use of Simpson oil. Um, these are real stories. These are real stories, and unless you hear it from the people and listen to their, their, them and how they've benefited, you're not really getting it. And that's what needs to be done by the opponents. Bill Dwyer. I, I have compassion for those people that are suffering, uh, terminally ill or otherwise. But I just don't think that this medical marijuana law is going to be effective. Uh, there's THC sick. tablets that you can actually get prescriptions for from your doctor. Professor, Joe Fisher. Only one change, right? Real quick, one change, one quickly. Ch only one change. I would more specifically define those individuals that are entitled to certification with the opportunity to petition for, for additional. Neil Rockine, defense attorney. One change? One change, that's it. Every case in which there's a medical marijuana card or certification the defendant gets to mention the Medical Marijuana Act and gets his defense in front of a jury. Let the people decide. Add Chuck's MTO. Final word. Yes, I, I was a caregiver in truth for my father who died a slow, painful death. And if I could have obtained something that would have helped him from a pharmacy with a real doctor's prescription, I would have done it. So my dream world is to have a pharmaceutical setting with real doctor prescriptions. Anything else opens the door for the drug dealers to use this as a shield. All right, we'll have to leave it at that. Panel, I thank you very much. Audience, I thank you. And, of course, the people that have listened to this, I thank you as well. From all of us here at the Community Media Network, as well as the, at the Oakland Press, I'm Charlie Light, and thank you for tuning in to this live town hall meeting, Medical Marijuana Revisited. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye now. That's not a paying word tie, is it? Of course. <laughs> Good to have you here. Yeah. Well, good job, Charlie. I thought you were going to give a half hour.